Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we're going to be creating a letter portrait, but with the added feature of the pictures popping out of the text. So let's get to it. So with the advent of Mother's Day, uh, I'm going to make this mom themed and use mom letters and also use some images I got off of pexels.com that include motherly figures. And so to start off, I have a HD resolution style image, and I'm gonna take the flood fill tool and just make the background black. Next, I'm gonna add my text. Um, so having my material set properly and my font set, I'll make this white actually so that it'll stand out a little bit more on the black background. And I'm using Chunk 5 Roman. Um, in this particular case, I just chose a font that has some thickness to it so that we can actually see what's in the picture. But it won't be that important since we're going to be ensuring that the elements that we care about show up even if they don't fit within the text. So I'm going to remove the uh, texture that seems to be on this, or the pattern, if you will, that seems to be on this text. And we'll just have the letters. And then we can just resize it using the pick tool uh, to whatever shape or however you want it to fill within the space. And then you can always use these positioning tool shortcuts to help put it you know, exactly where you want it to be. I might actually make it a little bit lower because I'm expecting some of the image uh, that I'm going to be overlaying to show through on the top. So now that I have my text, what I can do is add my first image that I'm going to work with that's going to uh, fill one of these letters. So in this case, I'm going to drag this image in, and then I'm going to resize it so that it kind of fits fits within that letter space, but overlapping just a little bit. It's going to stick out to some degree, and that's the part that we're going to add a little bit of extra layering on top for that effect. So maybe about there. So then what I can do is on my vector layer, I can choose the magic wand tool and click on one of the letters. And to ensure that you only highlight the one letter, you'll wanna make sure that it's set to opacity and contiguous. And in this way, you're only gonna get this letter instead of all the other white material. So with this letter selected, we can pick our image layer and then say mask, show selection. And then what that's going to do is it's going to isolate the image just to where that selection was. And this is classic um, standard masking approach using selections. A lot of times the images are actually just relegated to what's in here. So you'd probably put the faces in here, but we're gonna take it a step further. So it's okay if the parts that we care about most are showing up on the top. So now that we've gotten about this far, what we wanna do next is duplicate this image and then drag it on top. And then what we can do, um, you can do this multiple ways. You can use a mask or you can use an eraser. In my case, I'm going to use an eraser just because I want to benefit from uh, the background eraser tool. And then you can just start kind of cleaning up these edges around here. And then what you'll notice is as you're erasing, the mask version is still going to show through at the bottom, which is okay. And we can kind of leave that alone. So we'll just get most of this here. Try to clean it up as much as we can. Maybe decrease the sharpness in the areas where the hair is just to kind of clean it up even more. And then when we get to the stage where we've kind of cleared out that main area that we wanted to that doesn't overlap with the letters, we can switch to just the regular eraser and then just kind of more grossly kind of clean up all of this extra that's happening down here. And then what we wanna do is be a little bit strategic about really trying to allow this to look like an M still so then we can clear out just these portions here so that we get that M shape coming through. And then we can clean up these last little bits. 
and you can see that you can use a combination of erasing with the left click and unerasing with the right click to get some of those you know more difficult geometry so there we have our first letter and what we can do is create a new layer group and make sure that both of those layers are underneath it. And then in this way, if I rename this to first M, we can add layer adjustment layers to make modifications to only that letter. So if I want to like kind of bring up the darkness a little bit just to kind of make it, you know, pop a little bit more, then I can do that. And then we can repeat that same set of steps for the next two letters. So we'll just speed this portion up to get through it a little bit quicker, given that it's the exact same steps as what's before. And so now here we are with all the letters complete. And this is essentially what the key aspect of this effect is all about, is this sort of multi-layer method of extending pictures beyond letters. Now, what remains is just adding a little bit of style. So that's what's going to follow next. So what I'd like to do first is actually um, convert all of these images to be black and white. And that's primarily because the colors are very different. There isn't really a consistency across them. And personally for me, I think I'd prefer a composition where they are similar. So what I can actually do, because I won't want it to affect a background I'm going to create later, is I'll create another layer group. And I'm going to put all the letters into this group. And then I can add a adjustment layer for hue, saturation, and lightness, and then just drop the saturation completely. And then so that's going to have the effect of impacting all of the layers and all of their components underneath. And at this stage, if I wanted to, since I have individual adjustment levels, I could make further adjustments here, given now that I'm looking at them in black and white. And really all I'm doing with these is just trying to get a little bit of consistency of luminance between them. So now that we've done that, I'd like to add um, a little bit more color to the background instead of it just being plain black. Um, you may like the plain, back, plain black, and maybe the image is done for you at this point. But at this stage, I'd like to add um, something that's got a little bit more like of a deep red, maybe something like this. And then even give it like a texture. And since our background is black, you can see the texture kind of makes the red a little bit transparent at some parts. If I use the flood fill tool on here, it's still going to have that deep red color just because of the fact that the background is black. Without the black background, it could have a much lighter effect. Now, another thing we can do to have the letters kind of pop off of the background a little bit more is we can take our original vector and we can convert its background color to black so that the letters themselves become black. And then we can add a layer property of a drop shadow. Definitely not that far off. We want it to be just ever so slightly underneath probably centered, something like that. So it just creates a little bit of separation from the background. And then next we can create another raster layer on top of that one, and maybe just add some brush decorations. So like in this case, I'll do something that's sort of like these, these ornamental swirly, maybe not that one, ornamental swirly plant kinds of things. And um, just, just doing them in black. Maybe do one that way. And then let's rotate it 180 degrees. And then do another one. And then maybe pick a different one, maybe like this one. 
but make it a lot smaller. Maybe fill in this little corner here. Also rotate it 180 degrees. And this just creates a little bit of detail. And then what we can do to prevent it from being too distracting across the middle is we could create a mask layer and say show all and then return to a normal kind of brush. And since it's show all, the mask is white. And then what we can do is maybe with a low opacity and a low hardness, just, you know, paint some black in there, which is going to uh, maybe a little bit more opacity which is going to make some of the detail of these swirlies less obvious right around the middle. Just so it doesn't become too distracting from the letters. And then maybe to finish it off, we can uh, add another vector layer. And let's find some preset shapes. And I believe that there is a heart shape that is pretty standard. Comes with PaintShop Pro, this guy here. And then we can just draw a bunch of those, you know, in some kind of pseudo artistic orientation or arrangement. Um, obviously, this is this is up to you how this comes out. But then we don't want it to, you know, once again, be too distracting. So we're going to bring its opacity way down. And that's it. So here you can just see a very simple example of being able to take the um, you know, text sort of masking concept and making it a little bit more interesting. It gives you more freedom in terms of the pictures that you get to use because you don't have to worry about trying to fit them into the very narrow spaces that letters provide. Um, this was Mother's Day focused because Mother's Day is very near, but um, for sure, this can be used for any other situation, and it doesn't even have to be a name. It can be anything where you would want to correlate some type of pictures with some type of text. It could be a team, a sports team photo. It could be Father's Day, birthday. It could be a name. It could be, um, you know, the title of something, you know, however you want to do it. This just gives you a little bit of extra effect um, with being able to blend images with text. Anyway, that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like updates on new content, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link shown on the TV. And I wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day, and I'll see you guys next time.